Welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how I made hydrazine from household chemicals in my lab. And all of that without using the urea method, because urea is in P, so it's a trash chemical. There are two main methods to make hydrazine as a home chemist. The urea method, which is basically brute forcing your way through synthesis, and the ketazin process, which is more refined, and you can actually get some good yields. So in the past, I spent many days trying to make the hydrazine with the trash urea method, but it never worked out well. So I finally decided to move my lazy ass and try the Chad ketazin process. As I said, for a source of nitrogen, we're not gonna use urea. So instead, we will need some concentrated ammonia solution of at least 20%. But the household ammonia is only up to 13% in water where I live. So the first step is going to be concentrated the shed ammonia to some concentrated nose killer. To do that, I made this funny looking setup, which should hopefully generate some gaseous ammonia to bubble it in the 13% solution. And I also chilled the 13% solution in the fridge before starting because the more cool a solution gets, the more ammonia it can dissolve, so this will help dramatically. To generate the ammonia, there are a few methods and I'll show you multiple ones. The first one consists of reacting a solution of ammonia with some solid sodium hydroxide. This will kick the ammonia out of the water, a little bit like when you get kicked out of a party. Right, so I've put this setup with some ice, packed up a lot of ice. Here's the ammonia solution, and as you can see, it's very fucking cold. Now I'm gonna drop very slowly the ammonia. And this should bubble on the other side. Yes, it works. Excellent. That's because it's very exothermic, and the ammonia is less soluble in basic solutions. After using all of the reagents, we can measure the density and check with some online graph to see how concentrated we got. We have a density of 0.93, which should correspond to approximately 17%, so we need to concentrate it a little bit more. If you're a cheap dude like me, you can also reflex the previous solution, because this will make a little bit more ammonia. Okay, so since this generation of ammonia was so fast, I decided to remove the funnel, and as you can see the bubbles are dissolving so fast they don't escape. So actually they just get smaller and smaller and get on the surface, but then on the surface they get absorbed most of the time. So that's pretty interesting, so we're probably gonna dissolve more ammonia this way, which is, which is a good thing. Oh damn, it smells. <laughs> but the real second method is to make a saturated solution of urea and sodium hydroxide. They will react together to form ammonia and sodium carbonate. This is really a great method because urea is cheaper and the side product sodium carbonate also helps to liberate more ammonia. So after a few hours of generating ammonia and dissolving it, how fucking concentrated did we get? Again, we weigh 100 milliliters on the scale, and we get 91 grams. Hell yeah! This is approximately 22%, so we can finally start the hydrogen synthesis. Anyway, I put the solution in a random bottle temporarily, and I go to bed, because it was fucking midnight, okay? By the way, before making the hydrogen, I just wanted to mention that it takes money and time to make such chemistry videos. So in the description, there is a link to my Discord server, my Patreon, and others. Now let's get back. The first very important thing that you will need is a stirring plate, and I know that might sound weird, but mixing is crucial for this reaction to work well. Anyway, our first reagent is 190 milliliters of the ammonia we just made. So I pour everything in the beaker, and... Oh hell no. Hell no, man. I cleaned the beaker earlier, but apparently there was some leftover copper salt from another experiment. Which is bad, because metallic ions will reduce the yield. Hopefully there is not too much though. But yeah, make sure that you clean your glassware better than me. To help reduce the concentration of free metal ions, I make this gelatin solution to complex them. Anyway, the next reagent is methyl ketone. It's basically like acetone, but with one more carbon, and you can buy it in stores pretty easily. I pour 50 ml in the beaker, and as you can see it's not completely soluble, which is why we need to stir properly. Then I measured on the scale 105 grams of a 9% bleach solution, also sold in stores, which I put in a dropping funnel. And then I suspended the dropping funnel above the beaker, and now we need to put on some gloves. With some good stirring, we can drop rice at the bleach solution. This will produce many intermediates, which will result in the formation of a sus chemical called methyl ethylketazine. Basically, to put it simple, it's a combination of one hydrogen molecule and two methyl ethyl ketones. Also, I wanted to mention that I didn't use any ice to cool down the beaker, but that was because it was already cold, like 0 degrees Celsius. But anyone who will reproduce this, you'll probably have to put some ice. Otherwise, you can lose some yield as well. I also covered the beaker with some aluminium foil, because I don't want to die yet. Once the addition of bleach is finished, 
we can stop the stirring and already observe a top layer of the ketazine which is insoluble. To make sure everything relaxes and separates though, I will have to leave the beaker for a little while. The time you need can be pretty random from ranging at say an hour to a whole night maybe? But yeah, just in case, it's better to leave it for a good amount of time if you can. Now, we just need to pour everything in a sap funnel, but unfortunately the layers broke again and I had to wait some more. To avoid that, you can directly pour the solution in a funnel before letting it hit, unlike me. Anyway, the bottom layer is the water, but it's fucking pink so I don't know what happened. Maybe some copper complex or whatever. Anyway, we can discard it and keep the upper ketazine layer. It's not a whole bunch, but at least we have some yield, even with the metal contamination, which shows how good this method is compared to the urea method. With the urea method, we would have no yield at all, that's for sure. The next step is the hydrolysis of the ketazine to form hydrogen sulfate. To do that, I measured 50 ml of water and added it to the ketazine. But water alone won't be enough, so we need to add 10 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid as well. As you can tell by the fumes, this made the solution heat up quite a lot. Now we just need to stir it and wait. After some time, some nice hydrogen sulfate crystals had already deposited on the bottom. To precipitate even more though, I cheat the beaker in some ice. Alright, so I've been eating for about an hour or so, maybe a little bit more, and now we have a bunch of crystals to filter, which is awesome. So yeah, let's filter them. We filter the solution the first time, but we have to keep the filtrate because more hydrogen can be extracted. To do that, we need to heat the solution to drive the reaction forward. You can also check with the pH if you need to add some more sulfuric acid, but normally you shouldn't have to. Oh fuck. <laughs> so I've dropped the paper inside, but you can see it's quite orange, so that means there's still a little bit of acid, at least a little bit here. After letting it boil for some time, we let it cool slowly and then in the ice to precipitate fully. So I've made this kind of setup. Basically, it's a um, it's a vacuum pump. Normally, you use this outlet, you know, to pump the the air and something you need. But here, it's it's the opposite. See, it pumped out of the, this one, and now it's aspiring right there. So yeah, basically, this is the equivalent of a trash vacuum filtering setup with the Bushner funnel and shit. But it turns out I don't have any round filters, so I had to cut some from coffee filters. The filtration took quite a long time, but now we have those cool crystals. <laughs> yeah, boy. I washed them with some water before scraping them in the beaker. Then just heated them slightly on the hot. The rest like of the dry. water. The final weight comes out to be one grams. My scale doesn't pick it up very well. I tried to light um, to weigh that again, and it weighed up to two grams, which is very good. And I have calculated the yield, which is estimated to be around three point seven percent. Oh, one gram, <laughs> bro. I mean, it's an estimation, so it's probably between like 2 and 6%, something like this. Which is pretty trash, because the, expecta the, because the, um, the expected yield is much higher, between 40 to 60%. The max yield is 65%, so yeah, that's pretty bad, but at least we got some product. If you like benzene, you might as well check out this other video I made, about making benzene from plastic, which is pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, anyway, see you next time.